Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Sayaka. I work with the US and Canada team with National Geographic Learning. Welcome to the Pathways on Canvas webinar today. Um, we have Jacob Skelton will be presenting. He's an assistant professor of ESL at Los Angeles Mission College. Um, I just want to point out that we do have a chat box. So whenever you have any questions, feel free to type that in there. Um, and this webinar will be recorded. So if you want to refer to it afterwards, we'll be sure to share the link with you. So Jacob, whenever you're ready, take it away. Thank you so much, Sayaka. I really appreciate that introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Jacob Skelton. And like Sayaka mentioned, I'm an assistant professor of ESL at Los Angeles Mission College. And Los Angeles Mission College is one of the nine colleges in the Los Angeles Community College District. So I'm very happy to be coming to you live today from Los Angeles to present to you the Pathways on Canvas project. Just a little bit more about me. Um, in addition to my master's degree in linguistics, I also have a certificate in educational technology. And that experience has sort of led me into this project. Um, I use Canvas regularly in my courses. Uh, and I also use, of course, the Pathway series. Um, so very happy to present to you this project and to take any questions that you have um, as they come. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's begin with just our overview um, of the uh, expectations of today. I'm going to begin by going over the general aspects of Canvas, uh, why we've chosen Canvas over other platforms, and then we'll get into the Pathways on Canvas project. And today I'm going to demonstrate book one from the reading and writing strand. Just keep in mind that when uh, these um, course shells are available in the spring semester. They'll be available both for the reading and writing strand as well as the listening and speaking strand. Uh, but today we'll be highlighting the reading and writing um, book. We'll also talk about how to customize the course shell for your needs as an instructor. And of course, we'll take additional questions if there are any others at the end of the presentation. So a little bit about Canvas before we get into the project. Canvas is what's called a learning management system, or an LMS, and there are many on the market, uh, including Blackboard, Desire to Learn, Moodle, lots of different ones out there. But one of the great things about Canvas is it's rather user-friendly. It's also very widely used around the country. Here in California, uh, we uh, are lucky to have it available at all the community colleges because the chancellor of California Community Colleges adopted it and provides it for the entire system. Uh, which is fantastic. It's also used, again, at the university level in various states. It's also international. It's a very common product used abroad. You might know that we can use Canvas to post notes, assignments, grades, all sorts of things. It's a great way to communicate with students and to engage with them outside of the classroom. It's also mobile friendly and it is also free. So whether it is available through your district or not, there is a free version of Canvas, which I'll show you later. Uh, and, and so if you're not using Canvas in your district or perhaps you work independently, we can show you how to set up this in the free version of Canvas. Just a quick plug, uh, Canvas does have a mobile version. And these are the two apps, the student app on the left, the teacher app on the right. Uh, I personally recommend using either a desktop or laptop for the work in Canvas, but these uh, mobile apps are getting better and better each year, and my students use them regularly. I think they're somewhat limited uh, with regard to maybe typing uh, or, or writing short answers or um, uh, paragraphs, but at the same time, they are quite useful uh, if a student just needs to look up something very quickly or to do some of the activities like listening or speaking activities. Those are all able to be done through the mobile platforms. So why use Canvas? Um, well, in my view as an instructor of ESL, our job in an academic English program, of course, is to get students ready for the challenges of, of college so that they can sit in a college classroom and understand and, and be successful. But in the 21st century, success also means that students can navigate computers. Inevitably, students will be using some type of online platform, whether it be a fully online course or maybe just a web enhanced or hybridized course, college ready, in my view, means computer ready these days. 
So it's a really great way to get students oriented with this important platform that they will likely see later in their college career. It's also a really great way to supplement in-class lessons. So many times I can't get through all the great readings and all the wonderful content of, of the Pathways books. So this is a way to maximize those course textbooks, to get the students to continue the, the learning outside of the classroom and online. Um, in a way, we're sort of creating an online language lab for the students to continue engaging in the uh, language throughout the week. And once again, it's free and mobile friendly, so another bonus in using Canvas. And just to be clear, I don't have any affiliation with Canvas personally, and that neither does National Geographic Learning. I personally am just a fan, and, and Nat Geo Learning just realized uh, the usefulness of Canvas, and it makes for a, a pretty good project. So we thought, hey, most many, many instructors are already using Canvas, and hopefully you're already using Pathways, so why not use them together? At this time, we're going to go ahead and check out the demonstration. Let me jump out of here and into my browser. First, I'm showing you the dashboard from the instructor's view. This was built in the free version of Canvas, canvas.instructure.com. And once again, I'll show you in a moment how to get access to that yourself. I'm going to quickly jump out of this and log in myself as a student so you can see the student side of things. Now, there is a student view, that's true, uh, but I think it's a better way to see it from an actual student account. And that's why I'm logging in this way. So you can see here, book one, the Pathways Reading, Writing, and, List and Critical uh, Thinking uh, strand. The thumbnail shows the picture of the book. Students click on that thumbnail and get uh, access right to the course. First, I want to demonstrate the typical tools that you might see in Canvas, uh, organized um, the way I like them. So for example, I like to put modules on top next to home so students can toggle back to that important link. And uh, these modules relate to each of the units in the book. So it's a quick link for students to get back to that home. Uh, the assignments tool, the discussions tool, and the quiz tool are utilized throughout this entire series. Students also have access to a grade book, uh, which you also have control over and can modify and customize. There's a link for a course syllabus, files, a way for the students to see other students in the class, all sorts of tools available to the student on the left side. And from the instructor point of view, you can also customize these tools, arrange them in any way, hide things if you wish, all sorts of good things. So this is the home page. You can see the picture of the book, and it is a hot link, so students will click on it. You'll also notice the little alt text tab that's popping up there, and that's for screen readers in case you have a student who is visually impaired, uh, all of the content here is accessible and readable through the JAWS program. So once the students click that, they're taken to the table of contents. And the table of contents looks just like the, the book. So each of these thumbnails comes right out of the table of contents from book one. And each one links to a module with, with all of the contents. And again, for accessibility, you'll notice a little um, blurb here which directs the students who might be using a screen reader to click any one of these links to get to the modules. So let's jump in. Let's go into, let's say, Unit 9, Animal Behavior. So that immediately opens Unit 9, this module, and each of the units is laid out in a very similar way. The goal was to try to replicate the layout of the book as best as possible for students to navigate more easily. So as you might see in the book, uh, if I could just quickly toggle over to the actual ebook here, here I am in Unit 9, you can see here Explore the Theme, Reading 1, uh, the video, Reading 2, as well as the uh, unit, I'm sorry, the writing task. So we replicated that same layout. Uh, we have also included a link to additional vocabulary activities. So again, each unit has an Explore the Theme activity. Uh, two activities to review the blue words, as I call them, or the unit vocabulary, uh, a link for reading number one, a link for the video, reading number two, and the writing task. So again, you'll see that replicated throughout the entire series. And I want to make a quick note here before we dive in. The vast majority of the work that I'm going to demonstrate today is additional and extra. So it's not simply a replacement of the book. We're not just putting the content from the book here in Canvas. 
we're giving students and instructors additional work to continue the learning outside of class. So let's dive in. I click on here the Explore the Theme, and if you are familiar with the book, that takes you into this beautiful infographic picture. Now one of the decisions we, we made in developing this project was we wanted to put as many visual aids as we could, but we recognize that it is important that the students have the book in front of them as well. So the main design principle is to direct the students to the specific page numbers in the book where they can find any images or any content that is relevant. In addition, uh, this is a way for students to be able to use the book in class and continue the learning here in Canvas outside of the classroom. So just to be clear, it is important that the students have the book in order to uh, complete all of the activities here in the Canvas shell. You might notice that this picture is a bit small, so either the student can go to the ebook, the explore the theme part, and have it populated there, or the student can click and download this picture and zoom in as needed on the different parts. So if you're familiar with this part of the book, there is a discussion question, and essentially that's what we've created here a discussion using the discussion tool where students click reply and then they type in their answer to this particular discussion question. We've posted uh, little little directions for students to navigate the shell if they're not familiar so trying to replicate the exact icon so when the students ready they simply click post reply and that reply goes to the entire class and the purpose of this is for students to engage in a discussion perhaps before they start reading uh, or before they come to class, kind of the flipped classroom technique. Let's keep going. So I'm going to go next to the vocabulary activities. Once again, these vocabulary activities go beyond the activities in the book. So if you are familiar, uh, in the reading sections, preparing to read offers the, the first half of the blue words for students to complete as well as in the second reading. So what we've done is we've taken all the blue words and we decided to continue the discussion not just on the comprehension, the meaning of these words, but the word forms themselves. So a little bit of grammar to help the students uh, develop and build their own vocabulary as they, as they move forward. If students aren't too familiar with word forms, if that's something that you haven't really gotten into in your class, we've added this slide so students are familiar with common word endings for nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. So once the student is ready, they simply click on take the quiz. Just a quick note, the word quiz is a Canvas term. I make it clear to my students these are not high stakes quizzes, these are just activities. I can't change the word quiz here in Canvas, so it is what it is, but that's just a note for you to make. That word is um, a, a decision of Canvas, not ours. So once again, they have the activity. They can open that link again to see the word forms, the word endings. And what we've done here in book one, we just want the students to work on a few of the forms. So we're kind of giving them a little help here with the different word, uh, word families. And the students will then plug in the form that fits that particular part of speech. So for example, angry, uh, continue, okay cooperate. You might want to work with students uh, for the first um, couple of units here because word, fo word forms can be rather challenging but once students get the hang of it they uh, really take it far. Let me let me make one of these incorrect let's say. Okay let's say respond. Now one of the cool things about using the quiz tool is that these are all self-grading so it really minimizes the actual amount of work that the instructor has. So if you notice, I click Submit Quiz, and I get my score right away. I've got four out of five, and I can see my answers populated here. If, in fact, there are different word forms for that particular part of speech, they will be listed as additional answers. And you can see here my incorrect answer gives me the correct one um, for the student to read. So again, that's automatically graded. And if you'll notice, now I have a third grade there in my gradebook, so it's already uh, viewable for me as a student. And when I'm ready, I go on to the next activity. So again, the second one here for each unit deals, takes those word forms that we just practiced and puts them in context for the student, called word families. And as a multiple choice quiz, once again, this is totally uh, self-grading. 
Notice also we've uh, tried to keep the theme as consistent as possible. If you're familiar with book one, it's about animal behavior. It, uh, reading one is about uh, Cesar, Cesar Millan, Cesar Milan, the dog whisperer, if you are familiar with his TV show. Uh, it doesn't seem to want to load that page. Let's jump back. So I try to keep that theme similar, uh, animal behavior, training a, a domesticated pet, etc., etc. So as the students are reading through, they're selecting the particular answer that meets their, that they think is correct. Uh, so let's just kind of toggle through, get a couple of these right, a couple of these wrong. Let's see here. Okay, and let's see what happens. So when I click Submit Quiz, once again, I automatically get a grade in the grade book and I can see my results right away. Let's keep moving. Now I'm in the first reading. So again, the students are directed to the page numbers in the book to read that passage. If you notice, we did not put those passages here in Canvas because it is important that the student have the book in front of him or her. Click on Take the Quiz. For each of the reading activities, we follow these design principles. Essentially, there's one question for the big picture, whether it be main idea or perhaps the purpose of the reading, and then two to three questions about supporting details, major minor details, at least one question about additional vocabulary, and then the final question is either a true or false question or a matching question. So you'll notice question number one, a little bit of background, uh, getting into vocabulary, uh, supporting details, and then again some type of question about uh, specifics. As we move forward, uh, we submit the quiz and we get our answers. Let me just jump back here to the module to jump out of there. No need to submit. I think we get the idea that it is self-grading. So let me come back down to Unit 9. All right. Okay, so so far we've demonstrated the Explore the Theme warm-up discussion the two vocabulary activities, which are self-grading quizzes, the reading activity, both reading one and reading two are rather similar, and if you are familiar, there are video activities, which are super cool. So let's jump into one of those. Now these video activities are available to students through the student resources link for the Pathways, on, uh, Pathways series. So we've taken those videos, which are available to the students online, and we've embedded them uh, here in Canvas. These videos are also hosted in YouTube, but they are not searchable in YouTube. They are what's called unlisted. So the student really can only access them here through Canvas or through National Geographic Learning's student resource page. So the student clicks on the video to begin. The student also has the ability to use closed caption. So again, accessibility. They can, sorry, they can leak out and jump into YouTube if they wish, but not, not necessary. It is all here and embedded. When the student is finished uh, watching the video, then the discussion question is here available for them. So these discussion questions build on what the book presents and continues the conversation outside of the class. The student goes in, clicks reply, types his or her answer, and then posts it, and that post goes to the entire class. Now, personally, I love these videos. I just don't have a lot of time to get to them in my class. I, I usually teach a grammar and writing class, so a video activity for me is, is maybe a little bit extra. So I often make these additional activities for students to do at home. Again, the reading, the second reading follows the same sort of pattern, kind of a big picture type of question, supporting detail questions, another vocabulary question, and as you can see, a true or false question at the end. Okay. Uh, finally, jumping back into our modules. Now, the, I mentioned that the vast majority of the content here in the uh, platform is new. The only thing that is not new is the writing task. Now, here's the thought behind that. Here we have several additional activities for students, including two activities that are discussions, which really involve students to, uh, typing. We thought, well, it's just already a, a great deal of work, and we imagine you're doing exercises with students in class, uh, giving them homework. We don't want to put too much on the student's plate necessarily. So instead of creating another writing task, what we've done is we've just built a platform or a folder for the students to submit that particular writing task from the book here through Canvas. So once we get into that particular activity, the instructions direct the student to that page in the book 
to go through first the pre-writing activities and the writing task begins. The prompt itself comes directly from the book. So again, this is one of the few things that is directly from the book. Most everything else is new. And then the student has the directions to complete the activity here in Canvas. Sort of counterintuitively, in my opinion, the student begins the activity by clicking Submit Assignment. Again, that's another quirky Canvas thing. But once the students do that a couple times, they sort of figure it out. So they click Submit Assignment, and we've made it so that the student has the ability to either uh, enter it through uh, text entry. They can type their passage here, if that's okay with you. Or if you prefer that they use a word processing program like Microsoft Word or Pages, then the student can upload the file here. We've also included a link to a Google Doc. However, this aspect is dependent on your district and whether or not that uh, Google Doc feature is active. So keep that in mind. The text entry and file upload parts are standard. But the Google Doc or maybe Office 365 links will depend on your district. So I just want to pause for a moment and just make sure there aren't any questions. I don't want to go too fast. Hey, seeing none, let's keep going. At this time, what I'd like to do is jump out to show you the instructor side of things and to show you how you can start to customize. Okay. Okay, so in a moment, I'll show you how you can customize the shell through the gradebook, assignments, uh, how to edit those assignments, how to, how to unpublish or hide things from students if you don't want all that content, and how you can add additional content to your course. So here again are all the thumbnails for the reading and writing strand. When I click on book one, uh, this is the instructor view. So the difference you might notice is that I have a few more tools on the left, I'm sorry, on the right, and then on the left, even more tools that you didn't see because some were hidden from the student view. When I get into the modules themselves, themselves, I can click on any one to get over there. You'll also notice on the right side, all these green checks here. So these green checks will allow you to hide or unpublish items that you aren't going to use. Well, let's say, for example, you can't even get through all the 10 units in the book. Maybe you just do units one through five. Uh, maybe you divide the book between semesters or different levels. That's common around uh, different ESL programs. So to do that, you would simply just unpublish the entire module and it hides everything. Or maybe you can do it individually. Let's say those explore the theme discussion activities are something you do in class and aren't necessary to do at home. You just simply unclick and it unpublishes it. Click it back and it publishes it again. If you'd like to move things around, uh, maybe uh, put all these modules into one particular folder. That's also possible, where you can then add additional content to your course shell. Okay, now at this time, I want to show you how it's possible to upload the content into a blank course shell. So hey, a few things before we do that. Yes, go ahead. We do Sayaka. have one question in the chat right now Great. from Michael. Great. Uh, so I can see it says, we are using a different LMS. Are the resources that are being presented here available to students and teachers if we're using a different LMS? Well, may I ask which LMS you're using? Whether it's a Blackboard, Desire to Learn, D2L. Cool. So let me show you how this works. Um, I am familiar with D2L as well. Uh, let me show you one of the cool things of Canvas. Okay. Here I am in the instructor view, so I'm going to go into settings. When I do that, I have the ability to export course content. So on the right side, you can see export course content there. Okay, so what we'll do if, if we have um, folks who use D2L or other, other things, we want to make that accessible to you. So what is possible is by exporting it through um, the D2L uh, platform. So if, if you're using D2L, this content should be able to convert and upload into D2L. I haven't used D2L in a, in a few years now. Um, it is somewhat adaptable, so it should be able to take this content and process it in a way that, that keeps the formatting uh, the same way as you see here in Canvas. Now, if for some reason that doesn't work, 
the workaround would be to use the free version of Canvas. And let me just explain how that is accessible. Here is the uh, link to canvas.instructure.com. And you would click here, need a Canvas account? Click here, it's free. Click that link and just sign up with your credentials, email, uh, username, password. Now, full disclosure, the Canvas folks will probably email you, might maybe call you and ask, hey, how can we help you? What are you using Canvas for? Um, usually I just tell them, hey, I, I'm an instructor, uh, or maybe I'm a graduate student just uh, playing around, trying to uh, see if this is something I'm interested in using. They end up sort of leaving you alone pretty quickly after that. Um, the only downside to this would be that you'd have to administer the, the platform yourself. That means you'd have to add students in manually. So again, if, if for some reason D2L doesn't process this content appropriately, this is the workaround to use the free version of, of Canvas. So let me just show you how that might look. So I've, I've uploaded, I'm sorry, I've exported that content. And I'm going to go into my uh, uh, districts shell here. And I have a blank uh, shell that I like to use here. Just a second, let me find that. All right. So this one's totally blank. It's kind of a, a sandbox shell, as they're called oftentimes. And uh, if you're so, if you're familiar with a canvas, it's ready to go, fresh, a blank course shell. So I click on Add Existing Content. And I'm going to select, so just notice for the D2L user, the reverse is true. So let's say, for example, your college moves to Canvas in the near future. All the work that you've done in D2L can come over here into Canvas pretty easily. So Canvas accepts all sorts of different platforms. And, and I think because Canvas do, does this, the other platforms are going in that direction. So for that uh, uh, participant who asked, we can work with you in the future to see if, if, if the content can move forward uh, very cleanly for you. Since this is a Canvas to Canvas export, I'm just going to select Canvas Export Package. I'm going to find my um, zip file. So essentially, you will receive a zip file once you adopt the book with all this information. Let me just find it really quickly. OK, National Geographic Learning. And there's my export files. Bingo. Now this will take a second, so let me go ahead and begin the import. We'll go with all content and make sure that's cooking. And while that is cooking, let's get back and talk a little bit more. If you are familiar with Canvas, then you know that the gradebook is immediately connected to the assignments tool. So unlike D2L or Blackboard, where you have a separate gradebook tool where you would set up the gradebook kind of like you would in an Excel spreadsheet, the gradebook in Canvas starts with assignments. Everything you see that I showed you in all those modules are essentially assignments, whether they're quiz assignments or discussion assignments, they're all assignments the same way. And once you make an assignment, that immediately makes a column in the gradebook. So what you could do if you, if, if you don't want all of these activities to affect the total grade of the student, or you want to make this homework essentially to be a pretty small percentage of the total grade, there's a way to customize that. You can also add additional content by just simply adding assignments, like, for example, if you do high stakes tests, if you do essays, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, all of those things are able to be added to this course shell as you wish. And like I mentioned, you can, of course, put in your syllabus or any other files. Now, in a, in a little bit, um, if you might want to take note of this, uh, there is a way for you to go in and play around with this uh, shell. So we've created uh, a demo shell for the reading and writing uh, series, book one, just a couple of units so that you get familiar with how to navigate and use it. So again, you would simply go to canvas.instructure.com. And instead of creating your own account, then you would just log in with the account we created for you called Pathways on Canvas Demo, demo at gmail.com. And the password is instructor, and that is case sensitive. And so again, if you miss something here in this demonstration, or you just want to play a little bit more or perhaps show your colleagues, this is a great way for you to have access to a demo shell. Let's see if, if our work is finished. OK, so it is finished. Um, it does tell me that there are three issues, but I know those issues. It's, uh, they're not a big deal. It's just small um, uh, items that didn't get linked, and, and that's OK. 
So when I click back on home, what happens? Bingo. Everything populates just like we saw before. Now I can go in and change the name of my course. In fact, that really is dependent on your district. So most likely that will be the name of your actual course, like ESL level one, etc. cetera. Um, so that's sort of out of our hands to control. If you notice also these tools here are in different order. So you'd go in under settings and under settings, navigation, you can start moving things around as you wish to uh, help the students maybe hide things if you don't want them to see everything. And again, you'd click in, go to the table of contents, the modules, and you have the ability to hide, customize all of those good things. Let's talk once again about the gradebook. So let me go into the assignments tool. So another way to quickly hide everything, if say like for example, you don't want to do those explore the theme activities, under the assignments tool, they're listed and organized by, uh, by the type of activity. So all the explore the theme activities are listed together. Again, you could hide particular units or all of them at once. The word forms are all organized together as well, word families, etc. You can see the way it's, it's populated. At the top, under this little breadcrumb link here, so you have the assignment plus, and then right next door to that, the three dots, you can click that and select assign group weight. So when I do that, I can say, I don't want any of this to be worth really anything. I, thought, I want all this just to be extra practice with no points. I can make it 0%. Or let's say it's all, all this together is worth 5% of my total grade. So I just kind of go in and I mark percentages for that. And now you can see I'm at uh, uh, 5 or 6%. I can maybe make those warm up activities worth nothing. And so I, I'm able to change the value of, of each of these activities. When I click on the grade book, so again, you can see that here. Everything populates in a way that is organized by unit and by type of activity. So only one test student in here. Um, so you, you have the ability to move things around, uh, customize again as you wish. It's very user friendly. Okay. Let me jump back into the PowerPoint to talk about a few more things and then take any uh, additional questions. All right, so once again, one of the questions we get often is how will this be uh, delivered? Uh, probably in one of two ways. Most likely a flash drive will be the easiest way for our sales reps to uh, deliver to people. So you'd have a, sale, a, a flash drive with this zip file already uh, up, uh, uh, loaded onto that flash drive. You'd go in and upload it just as I demonstrated. We'll also provide a little step-by-step -step sheet for instructors as to how to do that smoothly. And then again, you have the ability to customize it. Again, here's the little plug for the demo, pathways on canvas demo at gmail.com. And then the instructor uh, is the password. Uh, we encourage you to go and check that out. If you aren't using canvas at your uh, community college or adult education uh, program, uh, we recommend that you'd ask your distance education coordinator, whoever is in charge of uh, instructional technology at your institution. I'd also encourage you to take the Canvas training. It's called At One. So if you want to develop your skills and, and build your own content or, or simply just become more familiar with Canvas, At One is, is really wonderful. Uh, and even better are the Canvas communities. Canvas has a really great sort of uh, crowdsource way of, of helping uh, users. Canvas communities have all sorts of different topics uh, from best practices to design principles and whatnot. So community.canvaslms.com is a great place for you to get started. I also want to just take a moment before we wrap up to talk a little bit about the features of the listening and speaking series. Uh, while I don't have that to demonstrate at this moment, uh, those will be out in the spring. And the key features of those listening and speaking course shells will be that all of the audio that is available in the book and also online through the student resource page will be available here in the course shell. The same with the videos, just like we saw those videos from the reading and writing strand, the videos from the listening and speaking strand will be available too. We also are going to have listening comprehension activities, just as we have reading comprehension, listening comprehension as well, which gets into both major and minor details and vocabulary expansion. 
And finally, one of the cool and key features are the speaking activities. Canvas offers a media tool that allows students to record audio and video if they wish. So while the, the student can go into a, either a discussion activity or a, an assignment, uh, start the media recording tool, speak into the platform, and submit it uh, so that you can give feedback to the student. There's all sorts of things you can do with this tool, uh, from mini presentations to discussion activities to pronunciation activities. So lots of uh, awesome ways to make Canvas a mobile language lab for students to use. So at this time, if there aren't, uh, if there are other questions, I'd be happy to take them. Uh, the purpose of this project is to really enhance your ESL courses, to maximize time and resources, and to make sure our students are ready for the challenges of the 21st century classroom. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer those. It looks like a few I know this was... are typing. Okay, great. Yeah, so. Okay. Let's take a look here. Okay, thank you, Michael. So Michael mentioned that he's using D2L. And so, uh, Michael, in the future, when this comes out, uh, we can work with you, talk to your sales rep to see how we can make this work for the D2L platform. Okay, thank you, Veda. We really appreciate your attention today and uh, also want to thank Sayaka for her introduction and for hosting us today. If you have additional questions, here's my contact information. Again, my name is Jacob Skelton. I'm an assistant professor of ESL at LA Mission College. Skelto LJ2 is my email at lamission.edu. Thank you all for your time. I wish you all the best of luck this academic year and happy holidays. Holiday season's coming up soon. Thank you so much. Jacob, can I squeeze in one more question? It looks like Kelsey Please. has one question for okay. you. Okay. Okay, Kelsey says, have you, have you tried in integrating the My ELT side of things with Canvas, getting the online activities to integrate into Canvas? Great. Now, that is, um, that is technically possible to do, but that will require Nat Geo and, and Canvas to work together to do that. So what, what was decided here is that this Canvas project isn't meant to replace the My ELT platform. So if you're using that, keep using it. It's a, another great way to continue the learning outside of the classroom. So the, the thing that My ELT doesn't have, with, you know, with all respect, are, are the features like the gradebook and all the other things that Canvas may have that is connected to your institution. Um, so for example, links to tutoring, uh, announcement tools, um, of course, all the other courses that they're taking at the institution right there in the Canvas platform. So what we would recommend if you're using MyELT in addition to the Canvas project is simply linking MyELT to the Canvas, to a Canvas uh, module. So one way to do that would be to go into the modules. Here are the modules. And let's say, for example, we want the students to um, link into to my ELT. So we just add that. Okay, it's probably going to be at the bottom. I can move it to the top if I wish. Then I'm going to add the actual content, which will be a uh, external URL. And here's where we type the actual URL, my ELT, and then maybe name it as something. And then you'd add that item, and the students will be able to immediately link over to my ELT. So that's something that we could also help you, help you set up um, and make available. So to, again, to answer your question, it's at this time not integrated together. Again, while that may be technically possible, it's just not, we're not there yet, let's say. Uh, but certainly you could have that workaround where the students link from one to the other. Okay. So I got that question a few times, Michael. Are there other series available for online delivery? This is the beginning of the, uh, the, the Canvas project. So of course, great writing, reading Explorer, lots of wonderful content through National Geographic Learning. Um, if there is demand for it, uh, I, it's not up to me to decide, but certainly speak with your sales representative. And if that's something that interests you, uh, perhaps uh, we could go in that direction. 
So we use uh, great writing, grammar for great writing, all of those wonderful tools. Exactly. So, you know, again, this is the first time if, if there's a, a great deal of interest in this, perhaps down the road there, there might be others. That's, as I said before in other presentations, that's not a Jacob question. Maybe ask your sales rep to see if that's possible. Yeah, the same with Keynote. So any of those focus on uh, reading and vocabulary, really great series. So uh, at this stage, this is the beginning. And if there is demand for others, perhaps those will be available. Thank you, Jacob. And thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, it's actually great that you mentioned our reps. So right after this webinar ends, you will actually be directed to our website where you can find your rep if you're not sure who to contact. So. And we will also follow up with another email, including all of the demo account information so that you can check this out on your own time as well. So thanks, everyone. Thank you all very much. It was really a pleasure. Thanks, Jacob. Thank you.